So gifts of the Spirit. Like I was saying, we all, after we all receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues on the last lesson, and after you, you have it, after you have the Holy Ghost, then you can, there's 12 gifts that come with it. Or that we can receive. The Bible says to covet spiritual gifts. After we have that Holy Ghost, we can be used in these gifts of the Spirit. Okay. And these gifts of the Spirit, they're they're pretty much to help the the church. They're to help the church in whatever whatever area that the Lord needs that the Lord needs to to minister to the church. You know, he'll use these gifts. Because he know he he knows what what the church needs. So the gifts of the Spirit is the Bible says uh, let's go to first Corinthians chapter twelve. Verses 8 through 10. Verses 12, 8 through 10. It says, First Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. <clears throat> so it's. <clears throat> It's the verse 11, 1 through 11. I guess I should have read that. Let's see, I'm going to go back and read 1 Corinthians 12, 1, 1 through 11. Rewind. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. See, he says, now concerning spiritual gifts. It says, Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit see so there's diversities of gifts there's different gifts but it's the same spirit mm -hmm. and there are differences of administration but the same Lord <clears throat> And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. See? And um, <clears throat> I take that to mean that... Um, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. 
So the um, these gifts of the spirit, when they're in operation, it says the manifestation is given to every man to profit with all. Okay. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. <clears throat> to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one in the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. I'm gonna go back to verse seven also. Because it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit <clears throat> is given to every man. Okay. So that manifestation, I want to say that when we all receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, we all have the Holy Ghost, right? Those that received it speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Now you can profit with all. You can profit from that. You can profit from these gifts of the Spirit. We need to ask the Lord to give us these gifts of the Spirit so that we're used in them. Right. Because we can profit with all. Mm. Because, like it says in verse 11, But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit. It's still the same Spirit. Just like it said, the manifestation of the Spirit was given to every man. But here it says to profit with all. We, we all can profit from it. We all can profit from it. That's why it says to covet spiritual gifts. It's not just for some. We can all covet. We can all ask the Lord to, to use us in in what in all these gifts of the spirit <coughs> and um, so gifts that deal with the mind of God so these ones here they deal with the mind of God the word of wisdom the word of wisdom and I'm gonna and we have examples. <coughs> So if we go to Acts chapter 15, Acts 15 verses 1 and 2. Acts 15, 1 and 2 says, And certain men came, which came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So in Acts 15, 1 and 2, there was a problem that, that needed to be discussed because certain men which came down from Judea, they, they were teaching the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. You need to be circumcised. And uh, so Paul and Barnabas... Um, says they had no small dissension and disputation with them. And they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of the others should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders and ask them. They were going to go and ask the apostles about this question. 
<clears throat> verse 13 through 20. It says, And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, the residue, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord. Who doeth all these things? <clears throat> Known unto God are all his works from the beginning. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions and idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So that there was the word of wisdom, and this is the confirmation. In verse 28 and 29 says, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, Ye shall do well, fare ye well. So, the Lord gave witness to what he had said. The Lord gave witness by the Holy Ghost that what he said was, was true. So that was the confirmation. That was, that was him being used in the word of wisdom. And God, God gave testimony by the Holy Ghost. The word of knowledge in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. And I'll just, um, let's see how. Instead of just reading Acts 5, 3, I'm going to read um, verse 37 of Acts chapter 4. It says, Having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So they sold a piece of land, they, or possession, and they kept back part of the money, and they said, this is what we, when they brought the money, they, they said, here, this is, this is the amount, this is what we sold it for. Mm -hmm. But the Lord was using Peter in the, word of knowledge but Peter said Ananias why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land was it remained was it not thine own and after it was sold was it not in thine own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart thou hast not lied unto men but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. See, so he died. He was lying to Peter, but Peter knew that he was lying. So God used him in the word of knowledge and told him, why, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? So let's go to Acts chapter 16. This is discerning of spirits. Acts 16. 
17 through 18. <coughs> and I'll read um, Acts 16, verse 16. It says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by sooth, saying, The same followed Paul and us. And cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. So she had a spirit of divination, and what she was saying, the thing she was saying wasn't bad. It was the truth. These men are the servants of the Most High God, and which show unto us the way of salvation. Nothing bad, right? Verse 18, And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. See, so Paul was used in the gifts of, or the gift of discerning of spirits. He was able to discern that, hey, what she's saying is, is right, but you know what? Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he cast that spirit out of her. So that, those are the gifts that deal with the mind of God. Now with the gifts of utterance, these are the ones that the use of your vocal cords or your voice. Okay. So these ones here are prophecy. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 3, or 1 and 3. 1 Corinthians 14. One and three says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. See, after you have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, just like everybody received, then you can follow after charity and you can desire spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, use me in those gifts of the Spirit. There's nine of them. <laughs> use me in those spirit, those gifts of the Spirit. Amen. We need to earnestly desire those gifts. It says, verse 3, But he, well, I'll, I'll just read 2 and 3, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. See, when a person is praying in the Holy Ghost, it says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. You're not speaking to men, but unto God. You're speaking to God. When you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're not praying for anyone else, but for yourself. Mm -hmm. It says, you're not speaking unto men, you're speaking to God. Mm -hmm. It says, For no man understandeth him. When you're praying in the Holy Ghost, no one understands you. Mm -hmm. It says, How be it in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Mm -hmm. When you're praying in tongues, you're, you're speaking mysteries, it says. Mm -hmm. You're speaking mysteries. It says, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men. Amen. We speak unto men. That's why it says, Follow after charity, but desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Why? Verse, thir verse 3 says, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men. To edification and exhortation and comfort. Amen. See, that's why 
That's why it's, it's better to prophesy because you're speaking unto men and those are the reasons why. <clears throat> Verse 4, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. <clears throat> See, when I pray in tongues, I'm edifying myself. <clears throat> says, but he that prophesieth, when a person is used in the gift of prophecy, prophecy edifieth the church. It builds up the church. It edifies the church. It's for the church. See, <clears throat> that's why it's better to prophesy. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to pray and ask the Lord for the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Number five, diverse kinds of tongues. In 1 Corinthians 14, 13. 14, 13 says, it says, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Mm -hmm. See? So he that prayeth, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret. So when we're praying in tongues, it says pray that you may interpret. See? For if I, verse 14, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. See? When you're praying in tongues, your spirit is praying. But my understanding is unfruitful. <clears throat> verse 6, or not verse 6, number 6, number 6. Mm -hmm. Interpretation of tongues Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 22. Let's see. Verse 21 says, In the law it is written, <clears throat> With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. See? I'll read that again. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. See? So in other words, if the Lord wants to use someone in the gift of prophecy, there doesn't have to be any tongues. There doesn't have to be any tongues if we're all believers. If we're all believers here, there doesn't have to be tongues. Because it says, Tongues are for a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. See? It says, But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. See? So prophesying, <clears throat> the prophesying, the coming forth, it says, it serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. Why? Because verse 3 says, prophesying speaketh, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men. For what? Edification, exhortation, and comfort. See? So that's why it says, prophesying is not for them that believe not. It's for them that believe. It's for us. It's for the church. Verse 23. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place and all speak with tongues, 
And there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say that you're mad? That's what they say already, right? They say that already. Oh, well, that church over there, all they do, they speak in tongues and, whoa, that, you know, and they think they're crazy. They're crazy over there speaking in tongues. They don't even know what they're saying. Well, they're right there. They're true. It's true. When we're speaking in tongues, we don't know what we're saying. It says, and there come in those that are unlearned and unbelievers. Will they not say that ye are mad? They say that. But it says, but if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, it says he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. See? So even though the message might not be for, for them, because it says, prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. But when he, he sees it and he hears it, it's going to touch his heart and he's going to be convinced of all. And verse 25 says, And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. <clears throat> See? So they're going to be they're going to be pricked in their heart. And, and it, it's, they'll, they'll know it. They're going to be convinced of all. Convinced of all. He is judged of all. And, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. See? So... So yeah. So. So yeah, it it is prophecy does profit all, all that hear it. They're all they profit from the manifestations of the gift gifts of the spirit. So gifts that dem, uh, gifts of demonstration of the power of God. So these gifts demonstrate the power of God. In Acts 9.34 Acts 9.34 The gifts of healing. <clears throat> Acts 9.34 says then So Acts 9.34 says And Peter said unto him Aeneas you know what, I'm going to go back to 33. It says, And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ, make thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Yeah. See? So the Lord knows why he does the things that he does. You know, he healed this man and it says, And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. They turned to the Lord when they saw that miracle. Let's go to Acts 28, verse 8. Acts 28 and 8. It says, It 
I'll read verse 37. It says, In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, <clears throat> who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. See, So the Lord used the Apostle Paul in the gifts of healing. <clears throat> if you read on, it says, verse 9, So when this was done, others also came which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. So, working of miracles, miracle number eight, working of miracles in Acts 9.40. Acts 9.40 says, <clears throat> But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. So this was someone that was, that had passed away. Verse 37 says, And it came to pass in those days that she felt that she was sick. This was a woman named Dorcas. So she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. Verse 40, But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, Arise and she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. So, you know, if you raise someone from the dead, you know that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Acts 13 8 through 11. Acts 13. 8 through 11. It says, But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, whom also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtility and all mischief, thou son, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand see so that was a miracle because he was blinded verse 9 says and then Saul filled with the Holy Ghost see set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtility and mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. See, he just told him. He just told him that and he was blind. And the last one is faith. This one here defines this gift by example. So we'll read 1 Corinthians 13, 2. 
And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding and all faith, I'm going to start over. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. See, so this one here, having the faith to remove mountains. And like they say, don't go try that to the Rocky Mountains. You know, it, it could just be the obstacles, those things that, that uh, maybe those problems that we have, you know, whatever it is that we make a mountain of it, you know, we can pray and ask the Lord to, to remove those mountains, those obstacles that get in the way of our service to the Lord and, and just Remember that faith is just believing, just believe it. So here it, it showed us by example that though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. So there's, they're different gifts, but the same spirit. It's the same spirit, just different gifts. You know, we, uh, there's nine of them. There's nine gifts, and they're the gifts of the spirit. Like I said, the, um, like the Word of God says, remember we always got to blame the Word of God. So the Word of God says that it's the same spirit, just different gifts. When you have the Holy Ghost, we can ask the Lord to use us in these gifts of the Spirit. And they are wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, interpretation of tongues, and tongues. So, um, just remember, don't get... Don't get confused with the speaking in tongues that everybody needs when they receive the Holy Ghost. This tongues goes with uh, with prophecy and um, the interpretation of tongues. So it's it's when we interpret. It's the tongues that come forth. Matter of fact. So yeah, it was the, it was all three of them, it was three of them. It was prophecy, prophecy, interpretation of tongues, and diverse kinds of tongues. So those all go together and it's, it's with the prophecy. Then those are the tongues that it's talking about. Okay. And that concludes the, the lesson on the gifts of the Spirit. And later on, there'll be more.